component of multi. And I'm sure we have a lot of, so, okay. So this meeting is being recorded, um, especially because what we'll be hearing today are priceless memories that you know it, uh, need to be recorded and cherished. And um, so uh, this is a talk being organized on behalf of the Oral Traditions Project, uh, which is part of the Department of Maltese at the University of Malta. I'm Michael Deguara, um, anthropologist. And today we'll be interviewing uh, Mr. John Saliba, who is a 94 year old Maltese man from Zabbar, very much with Malta in his heart and the Maltese language in his heart, um, who lives in New York and who will be sharing with us his priceless memories on uh, uh, Malta during the war and the dockyards. Uh, I would also like to thank Dr. Don Saliba, uh, who's John Saliba's granddaughter for being instrumental in this, in this talk. She introduced us to her grandfather. We got to know some of his stories. He has so many, we'll just be scratching the surface today. And um, just to make it clear, because uh, Mr. Saliba wanted it to be very clear, this talk is in English because he wanted his family from America to understand, not because he has forgotten the Maltese language. Oshek. <laughs> That's my love. <laughs> Okay, he actually has the Maltese language very much at heart. I'll just um, make a brief introduction in Maltese as well. Il dinia tahdita li etigi organizzata al progetta tradizioni orali li uwa parti mi departamental Malti from Universitat a Malta. Il lum hankunu edin intervistaw li sur John Saliba li uwa rajal Malti ta erba u design sena Min Hazabar is Dali Yesh, New York. Who Limana Halumhaya Sam, Memory Impressability Out, Dwar Tartna Udwar Malta Fizmin El Guerra, and the Hafna Stayer Shia Samana, the Tahdita Sessir Linglis, a Rajuni Li Sursali Bashta, Liankal Familiarity of Mill America, who call you who know Yesta Wifmu Dakli Etienat. Madam Kolu, Metanijual, Mr. Seed, Hosukum Liberi, you call the Mr. Seed to comment it on the Malingua tree, do a question about the opening piece. Okay. Um, so let me just check if presentations in. Okay, presentations in. So, um, can I, can, can I call you John for the of course. rest of the Don't interview? Mind, eliminate okay. the mister, please. <laughs> Great. So how are you today, actually? Let's start. I feel very well, thank you. I'm glad That's to be here. Good. That's very good. OK. And um, your granddaughter, Don, who, who is you know, also part of the University of Malta, as, as, as she studying archaeology. And she has very generously prepared a PowerPoint with uh, some photos, which we'll be using as, as prompts, really. Not that you need any prompts for your memory, because your memory is amazingly lucid. Uh, but it's also to give uh, the, our listeners uh, also a visual impact of um, of the things you're, you you'll be you'll be talking about, so can you tell us something about yourself first? Um, how how old are you? We've we've already said ninety four, um, but where are you from? Okay, we're talking in Maltese uh, in English. I first of all I yes 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 we're speaking in English as as you requested so that your family can. Can, can understand, but uh, we're also allowing the space for people to make questions and comments in, in Maltese if they... Yeah, that, I'm losing you. Okay, what happened? We hear you, Nanu, and, and speak okay. if you wish. Okay, now... So, uh, John, can you tell us something about uh, where you're from? And... 
your memories of this place? Okay, let me give you a few points from the beginning. Um, first of all, I must apologize maybe because I talk too much. Maybe I go too much details. However, to, to give you some points, I am from Zabbar. I was born in Zabbar and uh, lived in Zabbar until the age of 25. I was, of course, evacuated to Birkirkara during the war, but most likely 25 years in Yo. Zabbar. Uh, Oops. Uh, so just a minute. Um, let's try and mute microphones because otherwise it's going to be rather disruptive. Um, so, so sorry. Please go on. Okay. And uh, Zabar is my hometown. Actually, it's in my heart, and I grew up in there. I get educated in there. Most of my knowledge is from Zabar. I go to Bayada Street, but I will talk about that later. However, I went to America, migrated to America in 1953. I lived in. So, so just just a minute, because somebody unmuted everybody, but. It they also unmuted John. Uh, so, okay, all right, I think we can hear you again. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go. And I've been in America 67 years, I could never call it home. That's exactly the truth. Uh, the th fact is, I could never, in Malta, when I visited Malta during my years of re returning to Malta back and forth, that's when I felt at home. America is great. There's everything here, but there's no comparison to, to, to your, where you're born. Mm -hmm. how, how long have you been in America now? Uh, excuse me? Mm -hmm. How long have you been in America now? 67 years altogether. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there. here we have a photo of you with your, with your wife. Yes, that's, that's about... Uh, that's about 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is your wife called? Yeah, Frances. Her name is Frances. Mm -hmm. And she's 96. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And is she uh, also from Zabbar? Yes, yeah, she's from Zabbar, about one mile away from because I lived behind the church street. And she lived in, in, uh, in uh, Sanctuary Street, all the way down by Martha Scala Road. Mm -hmm. Or the way Baragara Barbara stands today. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know this talk is going to be about the do about the shipyard and about Malta during the war. But I, I have to ask you this question: How did you meet your wife? That was a that was a <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna go very long because it's it's a long story. We had a band, and our band was called the Jive Timers. It was a nine-piece band. It was a very good band. And uh, we, the piano accordionist was Agatha Barbara's brother, Charlie Barbara. And mm -hmm. uh, we had a commitment for an engagement for one day, and he took sick. What, however, the people that we were supposed to play for, they told us that they knew somebody that plays the piano accordion for the rhythm. They introduced us, it turned out to be a nine year old, 11 year old boy, boy, but he was a genius. So we, we, Took him in, we gave him a little rehearsal, we found out he was a good musical reader, had good capabilities, and from now on, he joined the band. And I got a Barbara's brother, it was history. However, they used to come to rehearsal, we uh, rehearsed at least twice a week, and we used to go and pick him up from Martha Scala Road all the way down about a mile away because he could not carry the accordion. And his aunt, my wife, used to come with them. To make this story very short with him. Uh, there was a song that came out in those days. It was a beautiful English song written by an, an English lady. And we, 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 we heard it and we did not have any music for it. We told Francis, my wife, to go to Carabot at Valletta to see if she picked it up or Nani. And she picked up the song, the, the record. She brought the record, my brother Charlie played it. He wrote it, he arranged it, and off it went. Then on the rehearsals, Francis was there, 
And she says, this is a beautiful song. My God, this is beautiful. What's the name of it, really? I said, well, you just bought it for us. I says, as long as you're not in love, why don't you fall in love with me? And that was it. That got me hooked. Then from there on, when, when, when we walked them home, because we had no car, fa uh, fa no car available, so she, on the stage, she kept telling her, how does it go, this song? I wish, wish. And anyway, I never asked her to marry me. I never asked her to go out with me. I never asked her mother or father that we go now together. We took it for granted. Bam, I was 17 and she was 19. From their own history, 73 years marriage, 78 years later, we are here together, still around. <laughs> well, that's a, that's, a lovely, that's a lovely way to start this, this you know, this, Conversation. For time, yes, this conversation in which we're getting to know you a bit better. And yes. this is a photo from your childhood, right? Yes, I'm the baby in that picture. <laughs> my mother is holding me, my father is behind me. He was a policeman in Malta for 30 years. That's my cousin Connie. She died in San Francisco. The other one is my Aunt Paula. I named my daughter after her, and I don't want to tell you the story about that because it gets very much involved. The front mm -hmm. kids in the front are my brothers, my brother Larry, he, he died in Victoriosa. My brother Charlie, he was the leader of the band. He was an officer in the Royal Air Force. And that's my brother Joe. They're all dead now. And my brother mm -hmm. Joe was a chief, chief uh, superintendent here in a building in Manhattan, in JC Penny building. Uh, that's about it. About, the, about my Aunt Paula, she died at 45 years old. She was a very courageous woman, very strong woman. She did any, any job that a man could do. However, it's unfortunate to say that she died at the age of 45. Yeah, and, uh, it's so sad. And uh, the baby is mine. Look at the care that I have, not like now. <laughs> yes, it's a delightful photo. So, yeah. And this is the band you were you were talking about. Yes, that's the band. I, the I, timers. Yeah, that's the genre. I'm the guy behind the drums. I was a good looking guy, I think. <laughs> yes, the little, and the little guy that, that actually was the cause of our marriage is the guy with the piano accordion right behind me, Charlie Charlie Chicluna. And mm -hmm. he died in Australia, but he was a fantastic piano accordion player. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how it caused my marriage. Mm -hmm. The other one stand next to me, the bass guy is Dominic Kassar. It was a good one. The one standing up is my brother Charlie, the one that was an officer in the, in the Air Force. Next to him is Charlie Gauchi, the second uh, the trumpet player. The other one was Louis Frieha. And uh, the first row, we go by the saxophone players to my brother Joe. And another one, Charlie Bagari, and I was in Charlie Green, Mamel mm Hamru. -hmm. And uh, around about which year was this photo taken, or at least that which was, decade? The photo taken has to be taken around 1946, 47. Mm -hmm. I would say mm -hmm. more, more or less 1947. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And be before the name uh, of uh, the band was uh -huh. started, my brother Charlie was very much inclined about the American life. We called it Jive Timer. The Times of Malta will not print our name. Of the word because of the word jive. Okay, why, why was that a problem? Why? Because it was some kind of a jive word. It's a, actually, jive was a beat. It's, it's a style. It's like rock and roll. You know, jive okay. is a swinging. Okay. Yeah. So jive was controversial at the time. It was a little bit, but then they printed it after a while. But we had a very good band. We played at the Radio City, at Trianon, at Tivoli, Buckingham Palace. Uh, all mm -hmm. over Malta, we had a very good band. We had actually a 15-piece band. We mm -hmm. played for the General Workers Union uh, mm -hmm. dances, but for the carnivals three days in a row. Mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. had, we had a very good history. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this, so you are a man of many talents, music definitely, and also art. And in fact, this presentation includes some of your paintings. And this to me is just such an amazing painting, full of life, full of vibrancy of, of course, Zabbar Church. So what, what, uh, what, what can you tell us about Zabbar? I know you mention a lot 
of course, uh, the church and the feast, but you also mentioned University Street a lot. Okay, as a matter of fact, only last night, I was refreshing my memories, trying, mm -hmm. to, count the, trying to count all the workshops that was on University Street. I would love to call it, if I was the Prime Minister of Malta, I would call it University Street because you had everything. Uh, let me give you an example. Okay, so, let, so, so let me just stop you there for a second. W what is University Street? Because you and I know about it because we've spoken about it, but the, the people in the room might, might, must be wondering what, what, what is University Street? Well, actually the name is not University. I, I named it University, but it was Bayada Street. It was a mm -hmm. crossroad with Redeemer Street then, and it, it leads from, from, uh, from uh, St. Michael's Square all the way to the Zabbar Gate by 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 uh, by El Gura and Zaytun, mm -hmm. but it was but that street was full of action. That street it had if I made if I, if I mentioned a few things, but what we I why I call it University Street because there was so much knowledge going on, mm -hmm. and we did not even realize we we're learning that much. As children, we were a lot Malta as a human factory, so we were a lot of kids in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We this street, but in that same street, we had all these shops. We had at least a wagon maker. We had three carpenter shops. We had a carpenter shop that was a wood turner for a torn that to the Maltese and make all these designs, ornaments for the doors. We had three blacksmiths. One of them was making the raw iron work. The other blacksmith was more, more in heavy duty work. And the other blacksmith was a shoe horse. <laughs> Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, what we the, the, the picture that I've put up um, is one of another one of your paintings of a blacksmith's workshop. Is this based on Bayada Street itself? Oh yes, yeah, of course. But because you see, let me uh, let me explain to you that picture. You have mm -hmm. a red dress in the back. You see the, the weed in there in the back. But none mm -hmm. of that was none of that was electrified. Everything was done by hand. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a drill press, right? And there's another drill press in the corner. There's the anvil in there. There's the tools, hand tools all around the place. It's, there's, most of all, there's the bellows in here. It looks like a drum, but like a, like a tank. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. the bellows. We pulled the, We used to pull the uh, the rope and stretch the the tank, the, 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 the bellows all the way up, and then drop it. Go. That was connected to the forge, as you see the hood on the forge. And you see the little fire in the corner there where, where, where the layout is. And you see the flames going up by mm -hmm. the pillows, introducing the, the, the air into the, uh, into the, the, and the guy had an anvil in there and you can see he's got a, an iron bar in him. He goes in there to heat the iron bar in the forge and then he mm -hmm. could shape it on the anvil. So, so yes. In fact, one, one thing I noticed in your paintings is that you include so much detail uh, that every little part of the of the painting has a story to yes. to itself. Yes, and I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. That picture stands now. It exists in East Meadows to my doctor's office because he was a he's a doctor, great guy, and he's always very mechanically inclined. So mm -hmm. the only thing that compensate his knowledge by giving him an idea what a blacksmith shop looked like in Malta. Mm -hmm. And Strada Bayada, Strada, I said, still say Strada. Yeah, it's Bayada Street was ideal for anybody. You have a pulley in here, you have a hurricane lamp on top of the ceiling, you see? And that, that really, the, 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 uh, the wood press in there, but everything is by hand, turn by hand, turn by hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. So it was very, I think, uh, I, I, I like it very much. Even the beams, the beams in the ceiling, you see? You don't see that much anymore, but the, those there had the shorrock in the beams, the slubs, mm -hmm. resting on the beams, you see? Uh, mm -hmm. The only thing wrong with that picture, I tell you one thing, it's nice and, and nicely lit, because <laughs> usually a blacksmith shop is very dark, and uh, with the soot coming out from the forges, you know, and the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the environment, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, in fact, you've already given us a bit of, a, of an idea of how learning went on, that 
um, learning went on by seeing people do things, probably doing some small jobs here and there in the workshops. And of course, um, that ties in very much with, uh, with the dockyard, which was both, uh, it, it was essentially also a, a school in itself. Um, Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Um, can I ask? Because I was a little bit late. Um, hello, speaking. Okay. Doris Zammi. Hello, Doris. Um, yes. uh, hello. <laughs> and I did not catch the name of the, the speak who is speaking. Who is he? John so, Saliba. <laughs> what? John Saliba? John Saliba. John Saliba. Because I thought maybe I would have uh, um, interviewed you when I was in New York with the program um, Destinazione. No. Uh, Americana. Maybe you remember. Uh, we well, we did we did have quite a few on going on in New York, a story especially in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. But I don't recall any of that. And uh, we put a, a great show mm -hmm. for the uh, for the people in Hamroon, uh, you know, for the Salaziani, for the blind in Malta, for the crippled in Malta. I was proud to say we had at, okay. at uh, one of the schools mm -hmm. in, in Astoria, we had a crowd of about 6,000 people. Mm -hmm. And that was in the hands of Father Camilleri that he resides in Gozo. Now he retired in Gozo. Mm -hmm. And, and I think, I, I think Thank you if I'm not mistaken, sorry, Don I included. Maybe I would have, I have interviewed you, sorry. Okay, right. mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, Thank, thanks a lot for your question. Uh, and I think Don actually included um, one of the programs of the of, 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 of this yes. festival. So, um, but the, what, what we have here is an examination test. So there was an examination to get into the, to start working in the dockyard. Yes, yes. How, how however, did that work? However, I, I'll be honest with you. I have no idea who Mr. Hall was. Maybe okay. This was, maybe this was be, before my time. Because what I had, uh, the, the college I went to in, in Cospicua was St. Mary's College. Mm -hmm. And the teacher, the teacher was uh, Bondina, his name is Sudalu Bondina. That was, and there was, this was a two teacher college, okay? But it was strictly mastering the, 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 the tuition to, to enter the docket exam. Mm -hmm. and, and believe it or not, the two teachers, one of them happened to be my cousin, and I never knew she was my cousin. And uh, it was she was a great teacher. And I, I, I'm I'm sorry to to intervene with this one here because I was shocked. I was her student, and she kept looking at me and looking at me and looking. I says, something is wrong. Do I do something wrong? She said, no. She says, she says, she says, you look very familiar. I says. I, I don't know. I says I. Anyway, he turned out to be my first cousin from my mother's side. <laughs> she played the cello. She said she was a. Anyway, and we spent the, 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 the schools in, in, during World War Two with her, mm -hmm. and she was happy to have a relative. If we should die, we'd we'll die together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And her father okay. was was a bassist. He contra, played the contrabass at the Malta Real uh, Theatre Real. Okay. Okay. So, um, what, what what did so what did the examination consist of to get into the dockyard? How okay. did it, how did one start working there? Okay. The the, the, the examination con the examination consisted strictly of English language, geography, mm -hmm. algebra, calculus, hydrostatics, mathematics, time and distance. Time and work. Uh, of course, Maltese was not included because we don't need Maltese to go to Drakhad. But the mm -hmm. English was a failing subject. Geography was a must because since it was the naval yard, we had to know what's going on in different countries, the production, the, 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 the ability of the people, the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, English was a must. But hydrostatics, because of mechanics, I had to have to study to go with. Because uh, although you're not getting a degree, like you people have degree, uh, we we needed 
not even a diploma. They won't even give you a diploma. Mm -hmm. You only, if you have to, to claim it, they give it to you. But you pass the examination, you go in there, you go to school, you attend the college, technical college, and you must know what's going on before you, you, you know. But this, this examination here, which I say, give meaning of the following words, apparatus, bow, and co cooperative there. That's about English. That's all English language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Draw a few lines, outlines, map mm -hmm. of Canada. Yes, that was important. You had to memorize. As a matter of fact, it was so important about geography that as soon as we go into the class in the morning, after we say the prayers, you one by one, you approach the teacher, Mr. Alun, and you have to recite, recite two pages memorized from the night before when you go home that you could tell when yeah, this is Morta. 135 square uh, circumference, uh, blah, 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 production mm -hmm. is vegetables, mm -hmm. potatoes, export, import, mm -hmm. and you go on, you give the description of what goes in that, in that country. Mm -hmm. And he will give you that at when. What is the mm -hmm. population of England? What is the population of England? Of Italy, mm -hmm. it was like that. That's something like mm -hmm. that. But mm -hmm. hydrostatics, calculus, it's a different story. Okay. Then you go into very technical, technical, stuff mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so 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 it, so it was a very intensive test very intensive as a matter of fact I'm, I'm 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 gonna go a little further you had 40 equations when you go home you got finished 40 equations for the next morning to present as a homework you had three or four pages of geography then you have to remember the, the formulae so of the algebra formulae of of, of, hydro, of hydrostatics. I mean, it, it's very, very depressing because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you you have no time to go home, then you eat, you have no time to play, not, uh, and it, it was continuously studying, which was worth it because mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. discipline at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I remember you telling me also there was a limited number of times that one could sit for this test, only twice. Yes. Well, the age was 15 and 16. That's it. Uh, the youngest is 15 and the, the oldest is 16. Why? Because of the length of the apprenticeship. The apprenticeship was different. Okay. It was five years, six years, and seven years. Okay. So you have to be complete. You, you got to go from A to Z. Okay. A, so A anybody above the age of 16 was not allowed to sit for this test? No, because it's already too old. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they would they would take somebody that did not qualify for the test, uh, and they give uh -huh. him a, a what do you call it, a trainee, but he will not go to school. He will not go to any mm -hmm. mathematics mm -hmm. and all that stuff. He go to learn the trade only. Mm -hmm. And what 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 happened after after one passed the test? Did one start working in the dockyard okay. as an apprentice? Yeah, well, the story was this. It depends how you rate. I must mm -hmm. admit, I failed the first test. So I, I entered the yard, the, 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 the dockyard at 16. Uh, and then you have to show what the, how you qualify by numbers. This time I did not fail, I was number 11. But you have a choice which trade you want. But the choice were given to the lower, the people that, that grade, graded the best, okay? So, but I always was, I always liked architecture very, very much. And I chose architecture. I was, you know, to become a senior mason, a master mm -hmm. mason. But I could have picked up other trades as electrician. There are choice of, choice of trades because now you talk of a new university, the dockyard is the biggest university in the world because you can't have anything better wherever you go. You got, you got, you, you take from Vittorios, a stretch all the way to, to Sanglea and even the bottom of Casal Paula, and you got all kinds of trades under the creation of God. You got trades, you got tools, you got machinery, you, you see a variety of ships, variety of boats, you see people, how, how they weld, etc. You It's enormous, you can't even explain it. And this is, and you have to, you have to prove yourself, not just become, become an apprentice and that's it. No, sir, you got examination as you go along every three months, you have to rate. If you don't rate, be, you'll be penalized. 
And then at the end of this apprenticeship, you have to take a final exam to, to see if they, if they qualify for the trade you study. And mm -hmm. some trade is not just amazing. If you take amazing, for example, you don't just go and learn what a, what a rock is. You go from the quarry, from the cutting of the blocks, from the brink of the blocks, how the dressing of the blocks, how they laid, how they put the ornaments on them, you know, the sculpturing on them, how you lay them, the weight of them, mm -hmm. the cal a calculus there, the, the weight itself, the mm -hmm. mixing of mm -hmm. the concrete, the mixing of, of, of the mortar, very, uh, and mm -hmm. scaffold, how you've said the scaffold mm -hmm. to, to build, and uh, how you, you, we used to have, we didn't have a cranes handy at that time, we had pillars, big, long, high, like poles, and we used to move them, it take about about one, two, three, four, about about six or eight people to move. We move the pillars straight from one area to the other by mm -hmm. holding with the ropes and pulling the bottom of the of the pole. It's mm -hmm. very hard to explain. Okay. But what what what, what what pillars were these? These were pillars. We call them. Let's me take, say this in Maltese. Pelandri. Pelandri. But the gonna gvar, it's a very arblet as a marble, gvar, oshni. Okay. That is okay. you have a, you have pulleys on top, and uh, 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 what not pulley? Uh, I can say the word tarioli. What was Yes, 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 pulleys. Yeah. Okay. And that has to be. Some of them have three wheels, but three wheels, three wheels against three wheels, so the rope will make it that much easier to lift. Mm -hmm. With more lift, more wheels you have, the, the easier it is to lift. But if you mm -hmm. have just one pulley and one pulley in the bottom, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is all the calculus that you learn, you know. And but you have to learn how to set up your own scaffold, how to okay. not to make to, to be very safe and, and stuff like that. But what a very very interesting part that uh -huh. you learn. Uh -huh. That's the thing that you learn on the job on the trade. Mm -hmm. Not only dressing so, the stones, what it requ requires to dress up the tools, how to sharpen mm -hmm. the tools, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, so, so that was the essence of the apprenticeship. It was an intensive, practical learning process. Uh, could you give us also an idea of the of the different trades there? What there were in the in the Malta dockyard because oh, yes. you've mentioned okay. you've mentioned a lot of them. Perhaps we can just go over them because there's so much more that we also need to talk about. But it's important to have an idea of the magnitude of all this. Yeah, the the magnitude was this. Like I told you, every part of the naval of the dockyard was important. Every trade was important. One trade needed and complemented the other. However. Then you take it by the department. You have the MED, Machine Engineering Department. They do make parts for the ships. What's required to be made, then make it. And that the factory of the MED stood between number five dock and number four dock. What between two of them on the side? And they had a shaft. And, uh, this was big, but they had a the long shaft from one end of the of the let's say of the establishment, the, the room that we work, from one end to the other, a big pole, a big, a big, uh, it's like a beam, but it's connected to a generator at one end. The generator would rotate and that served as a flywheel to all the machinery in the factory itself. Each, each machine that's turners, wood turners, drillers, everything like that, uh, shapers, Hooked up to the to the, they had a belt from the ceiling, from the from that pole from the shaft and, and the roof on the on the by the ceiling down to hook up every machine in there, and you have a clutch in there in each machine that you could hook up or free it, to clutch it to connect or disconnect, but that was only one mm -hmm. that starts in mm -hmm. the morning, and they turn it off before we go home. Mm -hmm. uh, that was making parts for the ship, any parts there is. Now, that was mm -hmm. one department. Then you had the MCD, another big department that they took care of whatever needed on the ships. They were the one to go on the ships, on repairs, everything. So you had shipwrights, you have liners, you have uh, recorders, 
you had welders, you had joiners, uh, cabinet makers, uh, electricians, plumbers. Uh, my goodness, there's so many things involved in one trade. Mm. Uh, boat builders, boat repairers, mo uh, mechanics, uh, me mechanics for the for the motors of the of the of the boats. You know, for the for the motor boats. Uh, what else with this? Then mm. you had part of that will be, be, be there. It is there part of see the factory right over there at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, my brother was a shipwright apprentice too, and I must say he was terrific. I mean, and you learned it right. <laughs> but there's so much involved in one trade to another, related to the other. We one cannot do without the other. You follow me? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. all over the yard. Mm -hmm. Wherever there's boats or ships, docks, and the ship, they were the, they were there. Mm -hmm. So we ha we have an interesting question that somebody put in the chat. It's uh, by Maria Giuliana Fenech. Uh, she asked whether there was rivalry or a hierarchy amongst the departments. Whether any departments felt they were better. No, none whatsoever, because, okay. uh, like I told you, each trade was as important as the other. Mm -hmm. If you thought the, the MCD department is great, the mm -hmm. MED is great, the electrician department is another job. Electricity is all over the place, generators. Mm -hmm. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, my uncle, who was in America, and he went back to Malta, there's a place I never mentioned to you, Ordon, that was dug under Corradino Bastion, all right? Dug into the uh, the rocks, and there was a generating station in there with generation, generators that they supplied the electricity for the area, like we have in here, in our area, you know, generating, they supplied the electricity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, in, in this photo that we're seeing, is this the Kashun that you... The Kashun was uh, the very end of the, of the dock. That's why it's called dry dock, because they're dry. Okay. And that mm -hmm. Kashun was also a bridge, because mm -hmm. when that Kashun opened up, then the water comes in and you cannot mm -hmm. cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that's so for, those of, for, for those in the room who don't no Maltese. Cashun in Maltese literally means a drawer. Exactly. So, as exactly. in, you know, what you'd have in a cupboard. Um, so perhaps you can tell us a bit about this interesting so piece of technology. The one that you're there right now, that's the biggest dry dock in Malta at the time. I don't know if that mm -hmm. is there today, I don't know, but that was number four dock. That was mm -hmm. right under St. John, Bastion, and in, in Cospicua. And between that dock and another dock, there's the, another factory, as you see on your on your left of the picture. And there's, there's another number five dock like that. Now the, mm -hmm. the, the, the mechanics of the dock is this. That's like an empty tub in the house, right? And the cashew prevent the water from coming in. So mm -hmm. when you open the when you open the drawer, naturally the water comes in. It fills up. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. it comes in, the ship is already in the water. That, that cashew is open, then they draw the ship not on its own power. They just push it in there when the dock is full of water. But before we go there, let's look in the bottom. Let's look in the bottom of, of in the area of the dock itself. As you can see, everything is scaled. Everything is like a steps, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. steps, it's, it's like a it's like a shape of an uh, of a ship itself. So the, okay. the people could go up and down carbon those steps and tools mm -hmm. to be handed. So mm -hmm. at the bottom of that thing, they have what they call post, the po el posti, mm -hmm. where the ship rest is, is, mm -hmm. is, is mm -hmm. hail. And right? these posts were made of wood, mostly? Yes, the posts were definitely made of wood because it has to be, they cannot be, have it made of steel because they will actually puncture the bottom of the ship. So wood mm -hmm. was always have that nice cushiony which mm -hmm. in the feeling, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. it's from the begin beginning of the uh, the cashew all the way to the end, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the way to mm -hmm. the end of the dock. That's a big dock, believe it or not. They used to have aircraft tires in there, the war spite was in there, the Rodney was in there, I remember that, all mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, 
So now, yeah. what, what that thing is empty, naturally, there's no tools and there's nothing. It's totally clear from everything. Okay. When they fill it up, okay, when they fill it up, it's, it's clean. The mm -hmm. ship is brought in there. Then mm -hmm. they have the, the, the puntali, which were the, the supporting beams mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. from the ship to the uh, from the ship to the to the side of the dock. Mm -hmm. and they lined up about maybe 30, 40 on each side of the ship. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the, the well, to put the to, to to have this ship rest on the on the posts in the bottom as they Mm -hmm. They have the, the these poles that are all. Could you see my hands? Yes. On, on each side of the ship, and they have hammers. At least one of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, and, the, and the ship is in the middle, in the middle, and these mm -hmm. are supporting the ship from going any direction. Then you got mm -hmm. these guys with sledgehammers and wedges. The wedges mm -hmm. was a tapered piece of wood, very hard wood, from about four inches high or six inches to nothing. And mm -hmm. they put them at the end of the poles and they hammered them down. Mm -hmm. And as they mm -hmm. hammered them down, they had somebody to hold the shot. So this mm -hmm. guy will be sitting at the very end of the of the of the of the dry dock in front of the ship, of the bow of the ship. And you hear say with with a with a with a speaker on his hand, you know, walking talking, Dolly! boom. Etc. Until the ship is tied in place. When it's tied in place, the driver go. The divers go in there to see if the ship is laying nicely on the posts. Mm -hmm. Then it's time to draw the water out, pump the water out of the dock. As the put the water being pumped, pumped up, the people start getting the tools ready. What is to be done on the ship? However, mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of fish in there. <laughs> A lot of fish mm. left over when they draw the water. The water mm. needs to take home, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's because they were brought through. Yeah. And that was, that was the function. But so people actually there, picked, picked up fish once the dock was was dried out. So nothing, nothing, nothing was wasted. Nothing. Okay. Um, Okay, I think we need to mute somebody, but... That picture you showed me there. So, um, one, one thing that was quite surprising at a point when uh, we were talking, you know, before, 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 before having this talk, uh, perhaps this isn't quite what was going on, but uh, the, the, this image, but uh, we tend to associate the dry docks, particularly, you know, as a very as very much a space of men in terms of you know the work that was done it was a very male space and yet you had some something that most people will probably not be aware of that women were also working especially during the time of the war could you tell us something about that okay let me tell you go back to the picture that you had those soldiers in there could you go to that picture where we have those sure like, this one right there right there that okay. is called yeah, that, that is called the DDB, Dockyard Defense Batteries. Okay. They, they were workers, actually workers in the yard, but mm -hmm. they were regular workers, shipwrights, mechanics, fitters, and everything. But they, uh, if there's an area, they have to leave and go on the post and defend the yard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now they had to be replaced when they're on, when they're, when they're on duty on the anti aircraft guns. They had to be replaced by, by whom? There was no man, but, but woman. However, the woman, the, the Maltese woman, was a very handy person. It was mm -hmm. like the invention is the uh, necessity is the matter of, of invention, they invention. say, right? Mm -hmm. And exactly because they replaced these men for whatever they're doing, they were, some of them were very talented, but they also you learn on the job, on the job training. If you're mm -hmm. a welder, you learn the welding on the job, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let me go back to let me go back to the dry dock for a moment. This that one dry dock, as big as it was. You had you see the cranes in there, but they have huge cranes, big cranes mm -hmm. running on the rail on, on railroad trucks on each mm -hmm. side. 
and they used to move them. And uh, whatever needed to be put on the ship, guns, if you replace an, a 16 inch gun, that was very heavy. So mm -hmm. it has to be replaced by them. That was very important. They also mm -hmm. has a miniature railroad in, uh, in the dockyard to supply heavy stuff, you know. Okay, mm -hmm. now carry on, uh, but I'm jumping the gun. Sorry. Okay, so let's, let. I mean, this is amazing information that you are giving us and uh, I'm sure everybody is very interested. I mean, it, it is such a colorful social space, the, do the dockyard. I mean, so much is going on, all those trades, all uh, the, social, the social interactions. There was even a theater group, right? The, the state yes. commandos. Yeah, that's right. Let, actually, these three things were born in the naval, in the dockyard. I keep calling naval yard. That's what they call it in America, a naval yard. But actually, the right name is the dockyard. Okay. Stage well, actually, the first, did you ever hear of the General Workers Union? Yes, of course. They're still, they're still very well, of they're course. still very that, much active. Okay. Nowadays. That, was, that was the best thing that ever happened, and it, it was born in the, in the dockyard. And the, the author of that, the founder was Reggie Miller. You ever heard of him, Reggie Miller? Yes. He's the organizer of the union. There was Reggie okay. Miller, there was Lele Tabone, another one, uh, La Verla, etc. A lot mm -hmm. of prominent people in those days. And they, of course, the English were very much against it, but mm -hmm. we, rebelled and we rebelled against it and we wanted it. Finally, the Commodore, the Commodore, he, he accepted it, mm -hmm. with the, of course, with the permission from England. And uh, the stage commandos was also born in there. And mm -hmm. that was people, very talented people, very funny people, that, such as Charlie Cruz. Have you ever heard about them? Charlie yes, yes, Catania. of course. There is there's, there's no a monument to Charlie Cruz as well. Uh, and Johnny Catania was mm -hmm. his sidekick. And mm -hmm. uh, Francis Chicluna, uh, Armando also. Uh, oh my mm -hmm. goodness, Lele Tabone, mm -hmm. La Ferla. They were all actors, but they were unbelievably jived together so much. Mm -hmm. they, they complemented each other in the capabilities of acting and being funny, you know? Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. was also born in the How it was born because we had a company. This phone never stopped ringing. We had the Commodore in, Mo, in, Mo, in Morta. But he, he, he was very, very, very nice. The best we ever had. Mm -hmm. And he, he suggested that there should be some entertainment to entertain the people because of the war. Everybody's so gloomy. Everybody should be cheered up. And then, you know, good for the morale. And they created these, these comedy acts. They joined them together, the stage commando. Ale, it's ready. And then we had bands too. We had like the Dockyard uh, Quartet. They were very great classical musicians, trombone, violin, etc. Clarinet. They played at the lunch hour. We eat and we eat all around, all around the all around the dockyard. Shut up! Shut up! All around the dockyard, we had entertainment. We all had Natal Musav, of course. Yeah, you put cow, we have a big okay. the people get busy. We had soccer games. This is during the lunch, department against department, like say the MD against the MCD, the joiners against the plumbers, and the you know, okay. set of electricians against and it was very competitive, very entertaining, and kept the morale high. Mm -hmm. Okay. So essentially the dockyards were important for not just for the industry, but and also for the trades, of course, but also for workers' rights, because we see, you know, the birth of trade unionism in Malta happening there. But and also and also for culture, because of groups like like the stage commandos as well. Oh, yeah. um, I, there I are a lot of the, yes. I played for the stage commandos too. You, you did okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not all the time, but but I played in Bukharkara. It's a long story. Let's not go so on. so yes, it's it's also very much important to uh, to the story of you know uh, art and culture in Malta. So I 
have skipped a number of slides just because I'm mindful of the time. We can, we, I think we can go on for a little bit more because this is very interesting. But I really wanted you to go through this painting. This is another painting uh, by John Saliba. And again, every single point in this, uh, in this painting has some meaning. Can you tell us? Can you guide us through it? Okay, let's start from the from the breakwater first, which is part of the Recazoli, and on the other side is for Saint Elmo. Mm -hmm. The side of Saint Elmo was knocked out by the e boats. Seventeen e boats attacked us. They were self destructing, and they knocked one of the bridges. They used to have two bridges from one, mm -hmm. and then only recently they put another one. But they made one, one, one bridge instead of two. The other side is Port Ricasoli, known now today, I think, as Smart City, right? That's my mm -hmm. last. That's my last job. I did a mod. I was working in there, and uh, I love that place. There was an army barracks in there and uh, a fortress. It was very, very important. Next to it, you see the poles in there. The, the telegraph poles, you see, mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they this is a very the... interesting point, just for everybody listening, uh, what John is talking about it, are those lar very large poles at the back. This is an aspect of Maltese history that I personally was absolutely unaware of. Um, so, so what were these telegraph poles? And that also, the... also some of your relatives worked uh, yeah. with painting them, right? Yeah, yes, that's that those poles are the, we call them telegraph poles of Rinella because mm -hmm. through them we communicated from mm -hmm. with the with the with the airlines, with the navy, with the ships, and they even know at, at a, I don't know if it came from there or Lascaris, there's another place in, in, in Valletta mm -hmm. that they used to know actually when we were all, we were, when we were at our best in Malta defending ourselves and getting over the beating that we have just finished taking. They used to know every plane, how many planes are coming from Sicily. As soon as they start the engine, mm -hmm. the fighters or the bombers, as soon as they start the, 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 the engine, wow, they know 10 of coming, 15 coming, 25, mm -hmm. wave after wave, blitz. They knew everything. So that was a main important for poles in there. Now, they're, they're supported by cables, as you see. As, uh, and in and, and the bottom, there's a building where the station, the communication station was, where they received or, or sent telegraphs or telegrams, whatever they did. Mm -hmm. But the wires were, had to be maintained. And my father, my father-in-law actually, he used mm -hmm. to work in one, of, in one of them that they actually, like they zip right, you know, they zip right today on these cables from one area to another. They used to go hoist themselves up to the top and slowly they come down by lubricating them or painting them, whatever they, they did. At one time, there was a guy who took a heart attack up there. And luckily for it, them, it sounds like a very risky job to do, actually. It, it was, yeah. You, you, hey, you, you're sitting for Van Lazera, you know, a little <laughs> stool, you know, and you're, uh -huh. sway, you're swaying with the wind going far aboard. But it was, they trained for it. But luckily for this I, 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 I'll switch just very briefly to Maltese because uh, also terminology is very interesting. Bil Malte, don't you know, say who Larb Litarnella, at least? Larb Litarnella. And uh, okay. there, lucky that, that he took a heart attack up there while he was hanging up there. You see, if you go further now behind to the side of where the Maltese flag is, that's that's big hospital. That's a naval hospital that used today, I think it's a technical school. Mm -hmm. so um, that, today it's a science center and it's also the part of the premises of Heritage Malta as well. And I'm telling you, it's a beautiful Big place. naval hospital, yes. Oh yeah. And there they had plants I never seen any place before. It's uh, the pepper trees, you know, it's Ibzarismet, proper. Yeah. The, the plants were the, I, I didn't understand the, the reference to pepper. Uh, I'm going to go more this for a minute. Forgive sure. me. Can I see your talbzar proper? Talbzar is with table pepper, the one that we grind. Okay. 
Okay. Same uh, biggie. Yeah, uh, little, uh, little flowers, white flowers, and the pepper grows inside the black mm -hmm. pepper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were a few trees of mm -hmm. them. There were mm -hmm. the ornaments, and yet they were very useful. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's that hospital. If you want me to talk about it, you had what they call VADs, nurses, doctors galore all over, and the people they used to get hurt or sick in the Navy or the, or the Army, but mostly Navy. They get cured in there, they get serviced in there, x rays, whatever. In there. Well, I went in there myself a few times, you know, being slight, slight injury here, there. Even the people in the, in the dockyard, they needed something important. They send us over there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, you, you, even the even the ships that we see here have their own okay. history, right? Okay. Oh yeah. That's okay. First of all, the one that, the, that warship that coming in, see that warship in there, the cruiser, that's the Suffolk. That 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 was sunk. Okay. Mm -hmm. wait, wait, one. Which one is the Suffolk? The white one. The white one with number 22. The okay, is, okay. The one in the middle. In. At the far end, you see a mm -hmm. tanker. You see the tanker in there? Yeah, can, 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 before we move on to the others, can you tell us a bit about the, about the Suffolk? Because... Well, it was a warship, you know, with the, uh, with the Mediterranean fleet. We had uh, four destroyers. We had the two cruisers, submarines, I don't know how much, trawlers, minesweepers. The, the, the fleet stationed in Malta. We had battleships, to name a few. We had the Rodney, we have the HMS Rodney, HMS uh, uh, Warspite with big history. We had the uh, aircraft, mm -hmm. aircraft tires. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the Eagle in there. Okay. In, fa in fact, there are, there are some photos that um, oh, don't no, include it. The son of a gun. <laughs> there you go. So let's let's, every picture, let's let's go to that picture before we, those which, are the which, Spitfires. The, the, which one? The one, okay. the one I painted. The one, the one I painted. Okay. So. Okay, that's the one. Okay, let's go now. The white ship, mm -hmm. the black ship were never there actually. There, the, the, there were two other ships. When I painted the picture, I copied all of it, but I left the two places for the ships near. Edwana. Edwana used to be, you know, the customs house. The customs house, house, yes. Okay. Pay in Minas and Victoria, in Victoria Thunder. So I put my ship that I came to America with. I used to love, fall in love with that ship because I seen it quite, quite a few times coming and going from Malta with Cardinal Spellman from the United States. And I fell in love with that ship. So beautiful. So that was called the SS Atlantic. And then they mm -hmm. sold it. And they called it the Queen Federica, and then it became Blades. <laughs> Next to it, what, what did it, what did it become? <laughs> blades, blades. <laughs> or <laughs> parts for cars, blades. The Asher and Okay. Because they sold it for parts. Next to it is the SS Nea Hellas, was a Greek passenger. That they think carried more passengers out of Malta than you could ever imagine. And they go mm -hmm. back to, because this, this story is hooked up. In the Navy, I think the dockyard was so good that when these people emigrated to America, Canada, and Australia, they drained Malta out of technicians and mechanics and skilled people. A thousand a month they used to, they used to take, emigrated to, to out, out of, out of, the, out, out of Malta. And, so that was my father, my mother, my brothers. They came to America on that. Okay, and mm -hmm. this this church over here, this the top of the church, this is Christia Taladam, mm -hmm. or not or the Chapel of Bones. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. English, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see. This one, this one, this yet I just threw it in there, <laughs> the way it was. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it, that's, a, that's a beautiful side. That's only the beginning. But however, I don't know if you know this, but from, from the breakwater all the way to Marsa, the jetty in Marsa, that's five miles. You know that? Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I didn't, but... That, that's five miles long. And they used to have the regatta in there. Yes, yes, yes. Which yes, is yes. The Maltese sailors, 
and the, and the more English sailors and we'll beat the hell out of them all the time. Mm -hmm. Believe me, by law, they used to start, they used to start from Marsa or from the breakwater, vice versa. Mm -hmm. Whoever gets in there, Malta always beat them. Mm -hmm. And the secret mm -hmm. was that they had, <laughs> I don't know how true this is, but they used to rub their boats with part albiter, with the leaves of the prickly pears plant. Mm -hmm. They used to rub mm -hmm. the water to make it slippery. Mm -hmm. They used to roll into, into stock. One, two, one, two, one, two. And that boat, you see, you see that boat moving like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with the rocket. <laughs> uh, talking about the, the ship that took your family to America, is this? That's, that's the farewell party when we landed in America and New York. And uh, that's the farewell party before we disembarked. Before, before we disembarked. Mm -hmm. But before that, we were actually uh, double check because today they come to America, escape and immigrant. We were so badly double checked that we couldn't go any place being medically checked in Malta and proven medically fit in America. And mm -hmm. this was the favorite party after the double check, after we passed. Mm -hmm. Now let's start from here. This is from the, this was a Bucha Mary that I'm standing here beside her. In front of me is my daughter Mary. She, She's going to be 72 years old. The other one next to it is, uh, is Don's father, Godwin. Mm -hmm. That's my wife under, under the kid Godwin. And this is my 11, my 11 month old daughter. We brought for 11 months. She's, she celebrated the first birthday in America on Valentine's Day. Today, I don't even know where she is. I'm sorry to say that. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, but that's how it is. And mm -hmm. uh, this was the farewell party. Mm -hmm. we, we, we were lucky on that voyage that we made. That was a very, I didn't say much about that ship. We, mm -hmm. we were lucky to travel on that ship uh, first class. They had enough room. Mm -hmm. This lady over here and her husband, he, <laughs> they, they were sent near the bridges in the bottom of the ship. You could hear the engine, the, 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 the propeller. <laughs> so when we asked them, we had a big cabin for six people. We asked them to join us and sleep with us. And they were on their honeymoon, but they did come. <laughs> <laughs> they did come. And, uh, and that so, so this so must have been in the 1950s, right? Given 1950, that 1953. Mm -hmm. 1953. January 22nd. Mm -hmm. Where you checked on Ellis Island when you got, got down? No, no, it was already closed. It was already closed. We were, the, we were, yeah, we was already closed, but we, we did visit Alice Island. Now, uh, another thing, what the heck was I going to say? Uh, no, we, we stopped, we stopped in Sicily. We stopped in, uh, in, in Spain. We stopped in Halifax, Canada. And then we took, we made that in seven days. That ship was so fast, but from, from Halifax, Canada to New York, it took two days because they killed time. They don't want to get to New York too early to avoid paying taxes. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, and, mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. you see in this picture, this is the whole two voyage here of people. That's my mm -hmm. family when we arrived in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are quite happy times now because it's the 1950s, the war is over. But yeah. the, the war was also very much. Uh, uh, a difficult episode in Maltese history. My God, um, yes. Tell me. And particularly, this is another artwork by you. Oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you tell us something about this? That just came to mind, that's all. <laughs> OK. But the, the, these, the, the, these, are, these are the dog fights that you talked about, which have nothing to do with dogs, but they're no, as a airplane of fights. Of I, I, I hate to say this. I don't want to disappoint my, uh, my, my granddaughter. <laughs> but this, the seaplanes could not dogfight because they were straight flyers. Okay. And that's a seaplane. If you, know, as you put an, if you put a Messerschmitt in there, you say, yeah, that's a dogfight. <laughs> or a okay. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. This okay. came to mind. I was, uh, you know, I, I was scribbling. Oh, there they are, my friends. They're spit fires. You gotta mm -hmm. see those. You gotta see those guys in action, my friend. Those were the fighters. Mm -hmm. the tell fighters tell us something were, about it. Well, this one I could see this on the deck of the wasp. 
the aircraft carrier was which, which sunk itself, struck a mine. This was sent to us by President Roosevelt with the request of Winston Churchill to send us aviation fluid and fighter, fighter, fighter planes. And we were lucky enough to send us 50, made the first flight with 50 Spitfires. Somehow they got lost. When they approached Malta, I don't know what happened, they got lost. None of them survived. They were amateur pilots. So mm -hmm. he put another request and they sent another 50. This time were very well trained pilots because they were uh, they're gonna face the Germans, of course. They were already very, very good pilots. And what happened with, the, with these 50 planes, 25 of them landed in in in, 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 uh, in Mosta. That's where the planes were in Mosta, the mm -hmm. Ali. And and 25 of them stayed surrounding Malta. This way, in case they're attacked by the Messerschmitt or the, the, the Fork Wolves, they, uh, they will defend them. And then they landed and they had the took over guarding them. From there on, they took over the island because then we had fluid by the, by the ship with the Ohio that, mm -hmm. that uh, you showed me before and the ship that- uh, Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the, okay, right there. That ship, mm -hmm. there's a, such history behind it, such mm -hmm. miracle behind it. You could mm -hmm. never stop talking about it. That ship mm -hmm. was the mm -hmm. largest ship, largest tanker, if you notice the chimneys in the back, largest tanker the United States ever had at the, at the time. And they sent it to us to supply because we had nothing left. We had no food left at 15 days total. And we had no aviation fluid to fly the planes. We had no, no ammunition, nothing. And this ship and this convoy was the convoy of St. Mary in Malta. Mm -hmm. On the way there with the with the aircraft carrier in Lostrias and the ship the Birkenshire and the Brisbane or mm -hmm. up to mm -hmm. 22 ships, I think only about six or four mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this ship was struck so many times, it caught fire, they extinguished the fire, they bombed again, again about three or four times. Finally, they decided to put two destroyers alongside of it. One on each side, they passed cable under the hull of the ship, under the hull to support it being afloat. They brought it in here and in Calcara Bay in front of their La Blitarnella, they shipwrecked it in there. So mm -hmm. it, the button. it was not too deep and <clears throat> it, it part, it, it's partly exposed like it is. And they, that, that gave us the, the, the help that we needed. Mm -hmm. Plus, and, if, and in fact, in Maltese, we call it El Convoy to Santa Maria, St. Mary's Convoy, because that's right, because that's because that it happened on 15th August. And it was such a pivotal moment in Maltese history that it's considered a miracle. So oh, yeah. what, what, what did this mean for, for Malta at the time? And did, did you actually witness this yourself? Yeah, I saw it, of course, but I wasn't there. I was in the neighborhood. But, but we, people were all over the bastions. Is there bastions in here? St. Angelo, mm -hmm. and all, all St. Telmo on the other side, St. Michael, they, mm -hmm. they, people full of people and they, everybody's cheering. Yay, yay. Because they knew we, we got something going on now because we got ammunition. It's mm -hmm. so bad that we didn't even have ammunition to fire anymore. Mm -hmm. We had each, each gun battery, anti-aircraft gun battery, they are allowed only, let's say, five shots, no more. Mm -hmm. and the aircraft fire. If you do, you got 25 years in prison. That's mm -hmm. how strict it was. It was mm -hmm. so bad that the German pilot, the bombers and the, the bombers and the, and the dive bombers mm -hmm. and the measures but used to land, they go on the runway in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in Mosta, touch the ground and take off again at liberty. Mm -hmm. They couldn't do anything until mm -hmm. this thing happened and then we'll be delayed living day that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. So here we, we, we can actually see also people welcoming the convoy and oh even the way my it God. Did. Oh yeah. You gotta see the Malta story. If you have a chance, look at the Malta story, the movies. Did mm -hmm. you ever see that one? And you mm -hmm. see you see the Ohio, the real film coming in. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when they when they shipwrecked it. Mm -hmm. And then was another ship called the Brisbane that was taken to Burzabuja. Okay. Burzabuja and uh, and and they they, they shipwrecked the two and they, they dug a hole on the side so they could empty it, you uh -huh. know, with flour, with food, 
Oh, that's the Kingston. That so I the Kingston. Well, 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 tell us, uh, tell us about this because it's a uh, very I'm, I'm, Okay, I talk too much. <laughs> No, no, the king, the no! It's not that you, it's that there are so many stories for you to tell. <laughs> it's an end. We could have another session. Anyway, absolutely. But, but the, the, in, the in, fa in fact, one one of the comments that came in in the chat it's by Josephine Burden, who's uh, an author uh, from Australia, living in Malta, and she said this is an inspiring story with so many beginnings, and I hope that's. That's what it will be. You know, there are so many more stories that you can tell us. Well, I'll, so be, I'll be honored. I, I, I know there's a lot more. I know there's a lot of old people in Malta like I am. <laughs> I don't know if they know the stories like I, because I grew up in this. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and to me, it was an education, proudly to say. I came to America. I did not have to go to school to learn the language. I did not have to go to school to learn the trade. Mm -hmm. And because I knew I had a lot of, a lot of Whatever it was, it was painting, I paint. It was carpet, I, I went to Necessity mm -hmm. is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. And we grew up with necessity because we needed all that because of World War II. Mm -hmm. the women in Malta, they <clears throat> complied, they did everything good. There was a total of 25,000 people at that time in the, in the naval yard. So you mm -hmm. see, like I said, it was a must. We have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to survive. Mm -hmm. And this, this poor little, this was the saddest thing I ever seen in my life. Because as you see, you see the dock here, mm -hmm. it towers over. That thing was totally submerged underwater. And this is the picture of it before it was hit. And this, mm -hmm. was, very, this was a small vessel in the largest dock we had. Mm -hmm. They took that for, for a little repair. They, they they drained it and it was hit, and and, and the dock. It was, was hit by an airstrike. Air it was an airstrike, and and the dock the dock itself was also turned out of action. It could not function anymore mm -hmm. until the World War Two ended, and they repaired the dock first wherever it was leaking, and they fixed the pump. They when they opened the pumps, oh my God, such a sad sad thing. They, they had people there, skeletons in, on board. No, uh, and the whole thing was rust. A bunch, everything is rusted in there. It was so sad. And look at it, how it, 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 it lost its position from the, from the post. You see the post under it? Mm -hmm. I wonder when it's saying, oh, no, on its side. That was hit and turned around. Mm -hmm. was, uh, the, the mm -hmm. HMS Kingston. There was another one, another sloop. Uh, oh, this is the wolf. This is the wolf. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which also has a very sad story connected. Oh yes, that I was only a few, a few yards. Of, no, I would say yeah, a few yards, maybe 150 yards away from that, because number five dog. That was a number five dog. I was studying in the drawing office on my trade on architecture, and all of, about four o'clock, between two or four o'clock, we had this big noise. Boom! The whole thing shook like a big earthquake. That thing slid forward. Mm -hmm. While it was dark, it broke. It broke from the uh, from the from the the post holding it, and it it smashed and chewed over the post under it. It moved forward, and the, the front hit the end of the dock. And mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to read be too graphic. There was somebody a person in there that has to be euthanized because mm -hmm. there was a lie. Believe it or not, there was a lie. Anyway. But they, they uh, uh, forget that. Now that I'm mercy on his soul. But mm -hmm. this was said. Mm -hmm. This was a nice supply ship. And then mm -hmm. the sister ship, I can't remember his name. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. at one time, but Bordeaux was painted black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, biggie. OK, <laughs> this, this is another favorite of yours. That's what, that's what I studied, my friend. That's architecture. Mm -hmm. This was a elevator to lead. They come with the boat from the bottom here to, the, to visit the patients in the in bigger hospital. And mm -hmm. this was an elevator carries all the visitors across the bridge into bigger hospital. And it was beautiful. And that was built by Otis elevators. This one is puzzling me on this side here. This arch over here. I believe that was because they must have had a double elevator. There one come and one go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but this is the only thing I remember here.
And okay. right, right on the side of that one, you could see a, a part of it, a villa where the Commodore, the Admiral, used to live. It was beautiful. I mm -hmm. worked, worked in there, mm -hmm. did a lot of repairs. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're talking about the large arch, it's, it's actually just the same picture, but it's a bit more enlarged. So you're seeing the same picture. Ah, that's, that's why it's so me so, uh, Yes. So it's it's not that there's a larger arch, but yes, this this was essentially the elevator that was used to transport uh, patients, patients to the visitors. naval hospital and visit and visitors, and visitors as well. Okay. Yes, it was a very busy place all day long, twenty four hours a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've had a few questions in the in, in the chat. One of them was when we were talking about uh, the stage commandos and the general workers union. What time are we talking about? We're talking. They used to function at lunchtime. We only had four to five minutes lunch. No, no, uh, I, I think they meant what, what, what years? Oh, the years were, were yes. during the war. I would say I, I joined the, I joined the 1941, I was in there. And it was very bad times, very, very, very bad times, bombing, etc. Yeah, but the, the, that's when the, the water, when the Germans came in with the last years. And mm -hmm. then, it eased up a little bit, and when it is up, we we'll start repairing things, start repairing the factories and things to be done. And uh, the lunch hour is to gather. They, each department has an area, you know, let's say in front of the factory and the site of the other factory and the other shop. And the competition, the entertaining, some of them were very special, people go to them. We had soccer games, like I told you, that's during lunchtime only. Lunchtime is over. Talk to work. We had the Balomba. Anybody remember the Balomba? Oh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the Balomba? Balomba was the siren. Ooh, wow, wow. Oh, okay, okay. That's the Balomba. That's the air that was sound. The Balomba. Listen to this. People were used to this, even the farmers. After the air raid, they were so used to them, they used to stay in the fields. They don't even bother to go to the shelter. But then mm -hmm. they created. They, they had the sirens go, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. But then they created the typhoon. The typhoon was a formidable sound. Mm -hmm. go, boo, boo. Mm -hmm. That means mm -hmm. the bombers are here above your head. Mm -hmm. So anybody say dog, you get penalized. Mm -hmm. You gotta go in the shelter. So the, another and the, and the, the, the I'm sorry, the uh -huh. doctor was full, the dockyard was full of shelters, you know, under the bastions of mm -hmm. Kuzmiqua. Oh, yeah. Oh, shelters galore. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we have a, 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 another couple of questions. One of them was, what kind of salaries did you have? And where, hey, where, you're gonna you're gonna and were you only paid in money or were you also paid in kind? No, <laughs> we paid the money. OK, so it's oh, so much of it. Let me tell you something. During the apprenticeship, you don't get paid. You the apprenticeship because you, they, they're educating you free. But you got pocket money. And I started at six pennies a week. Six pennies, six cents. I went up as high when I got the full pay of three pounds and 75 pennies. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was the, and I lived in that one too. Mm -hmm. because, and and uh, what, was, was that a good pay for that time or? Well, it was, it was, it was enough to get by. Let's put it this mm -hmm. way, enough not to, uh, it was the minimum wage. Let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. It wasn't such a you know, what you what you guys make today. Well, it's ten dollars a week. So put it that way. Ten dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I got married with that, and I had three kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone else asked. Uh, so the question was by Professor uh, Vikan Kramona. Someone else asked, "What what was the drill when there was an air raid in the dockyard?" The drill was. You go to the shelter if you can. If you are on a on a on a on, in an area, you try to find the safest place, safest place. But we did have drills. We were training. They were training that we we for gas. We didn't talk much about gas, right? About tear, no tear gas, not tear gas. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. We had training, we had posts where we used to go in there and they actually, they sealed the place up and they put the canister of gas and you, you see the gas mask 
is working. If it's not working, they 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 they, they, they stop everything and they test whoever was leaking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we had drills like that, and drills that mm -hmm. how to get. We had also Saint John, Saint John, um, Saint John Ambulance Brigade, just in case you know. And uh, it was all over the place. They have medical areas in the place, so they were mm -hmm. very organized. I tell mm -hmm. you one thing: for the bombs they dropped on Malta, for the bombs, most of the bombs, most of the casualties were children. This I must tell you, because I don't think you know much about it. They, besides these bombs that they throw at, at will, they drop anti personnel bombs. Anti personnel, mm -hmm. thermos bottles, mm -hmm. thermos bottles. They bought toys, regular toys, pencils, pencil sharpeners, fountain pens. They were bombed. The kids will go out and pick them up. Bow! He's dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of children died. I think they had more children <clears throat> casualties than they had grown ups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there, there are a lot of there are a lot of questions coming in, and uh, Don has actually organized a post university lecture party online gathering um, because there are so many questions coming in that we'll probably won't have time to to deal to deal with all of these absolutely. But uh, they're all very they're they're all very interesting questions. So anybody who doesn't have their their question answered. Um, please join on the link that was sent uh, by by Don in the chat, and you you you'll have also the opportunity to speak to to John Saliba directly as well and um, ask him your questions. I try to so, be as I try to be as brief as possible, not to go into details, and I give him no, yeah. but. But I, th I, I think the, the beauty of your story, of, of the way you, you tell stories is in the detail and in the way that, you know, even when you were talking about the convoy, I could feel the, the emotion that you were, that, um, that you were transmitting. I, I almost felt like I was there at, at, at that point. So, um, yeah, Don suggested that we end with uh, something a bit, more so that's a that's a trolley mm -hmm. oh okay that's the most those bombers are Mar savoia marchetti okay. sorry i'm just that's i'm just true. whizzing through the slides to get through uh to the program that you mentioned uh this one may i say may i may I interrupt you a minute sure could you go back to saint angelo the fourth saint angelo there which one keep going this one? one? No, that right there. Right, no, that one, okay. that, that there. Do you know that that thing today is still owned by the Knights of Malta? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know in there there's Grand Master buried in there? And do you know they still have right to, to, to use that place someplace as a storage or whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. in, in Rome, there is a, a square block uh, nation, the Knights of Malta, and they have their own laws, they have their own government, and, and they have a communication with this place in here by using for storage or whatever they do, or rituals or whatever they do. I forgot I put that in because it's very important. And mm -hmm. that's one thing I could never figure out. I visited St. Angelo when I went to Malta a while back, I think in the 70s. I don't know how they manage, and I saw sail ships, you know, the, the Schwein, the Martin, the Schwein, right? On top, uh, brought on top in the water. How did the hell did they bring those ships on top to anchor them up there? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they did it because there's one in there with the, with the figure, in the, you know, mm -hmm. in the, the, the proof water bubble. <laughs> anyway, let's cut so, this short. Let's go to your subject. Yes, let's just wrap things up with the ah, that with, with, with this program. Uh, some somebody in the chat also mentioned that the church might not actually be the Chapel of Bones, but Talis Church. Could it could it be Talis Church, which is close to the Customs House? Well, well. So was the so was the uh, the. Uh, 
the charge of the bomb. So was in the okay. tunnel, like yeah. Okay, but because, because of the chapter, uh huh. Then in 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 the Queen Victoria's tunnel, I believe. Is, is that okay? Also? Okay, so then so then it must be the Church of Our Lady of Bliss, and uh, okay. so so it's it's okay. It's yeah. it's also a church that, at least fortunately in this case, is still standing in Valletta, whereas the Chapel right. of Bones had been bombed, and unfortunately yeah. we just have the foundations of that. Um, so thanks for that clarification. Um, so the Maltese variety show, tell us. Okay, this, this was a, a Father Camilleri right now is retired from Guatemala. He lives mm -hmm. in Gozo, he's a good friend of mine. And who's the organizer? And if you, <clears throat> the beginning of this uh, menu here, uh, there's his name, Father Camilleri. A good looking guy, organizing, very friendly. And he managed, he always came to me, we were good friends. We want to organize somebody to help Morta Salesiani, Hamroun, Lomia, and some, some are disabled. And it's, but it's got to be all Maltese. We've got to get huh? some God. He knew a lot, and I knew a few. And we were lucky enough to get even one of the stage commandos with us, which is Johnny Catania because he migrated from, from Malta to went to Canada, and that's what he did, died in Canada. He was Charlie's, Charlie Cruz's sidekick, okay? We managed to gather a lot of artists, musicians, comedians, uh, actors, and we put a show there, and if you look at the size of the menu, if you read all of it, you go crazy with different acts, different music, Hawaiian music, classical music, string music, Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, that show lasted from 7.30 in the evening. Mm -hmm. You don't believe this. Here, here we see some of the program, in fact. Absolutely. That is, uh, uh, as, that's what I meant. See, our, even the names of Harbor Lights, Guitar Boogie, Red Sails in the Sunset, Marquetta, how I miss, look, I'm not lying. <laughs> it's all there. And there's, mm -hmm. and there's so many Maltese actors in there. We lasted till 3.30 in the morning. And we'll mm -hmm. put another show besides that in, in Hunter's College in Manhattan. You mm -hmm. have a question there? Pardon? I, I thought she has a question. Who did? Okay. So the lady, there was a lady in there, the one that asked this before. Was somebody asking a question? Oh, okay. And this was a great success, we had 6,000 people. And we said, we said, that we, we said we, then we gave ourselves a party, except well, it was great. It was very, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so unfortunately, we're a bit pressed with time. So we'll wrap this up here. Uh, I would like to thank, uh, the people behind the Oral Traditions Project, Adrian Grima, Michael Spaniol, um, Manuel Mifsud, who are the coordinators of this project. Um, also the members, Juzi Gat, Rita Saliba, and Daniel, Sal and Daniel, Daniel Saliba. A lot of Salibas in this, in this, yeah, in this we, project. We come 10 cents, a, 10 cents a dozen. And also Jan, Janneke, uh, who, who organized all of this as well, the slot, the, the Facebook event, the press release. So thanks a lot to Janneke for, for her wonderful work with, and dedication with this project. Also, thanks a lot to Dr. Don Saliba, who has you know, been, with, without her, this talk wouldn't have happened. And above all, a huge thanks to our guest of honor today. It was such an interesting talk. So thanks a lot. I think one thing that really came out from everything you've said is necessity is the mother of invention and um, that you and other people have risen to the occasion because of the situations they were put in. And there was so much inventiveness, so much creativity, so much learning that even for me, looking at that exam paper, draw an outline of Canada, I mean, I wouldn't be able to do that for sure. 
Um, so a, it's, it's been an amazing journey through time with such vivid stories. Thanks so much for this. Can I say something, please? Of course, of course. You said necessity is the mother of invention. I tell you one thing. Malta and its history, it's an endless story. Never ends, never will end. And you know something else? God mm -hmm. is with us. God is with us. He protected us for what we went through. I, didn't, I did not mention some of the miracles that happened during World War II, but someday we will meet again. And I, I will, I'm honored to be talking about these things. I'm not a teacher, and, uh, but I, I do admit that I have a big mouth and I go into details a lot. <laughs> It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I thank thanks. Thanks well. a lot. And as as I said earlier, I hope we have uh, more of more of these talks. It. I also need to especially thank Adrian Grima because it was his idea to start. Um, yes, he sent me an email. Yes, he sent me an email. Yes, and it was his idea to start collecting stories about about the dockyards. And the more we collect, the more uh, the, the more richness we find, the, the more it's such a treasure trove of stories. Listen, there's one thing about I did, we did not mention about the docket. My favorite subject was the pattern maker. The pattern ah, maker, yes, the pattern makers. My Lord, you could not believe it because they made the exact form of the object that they want to create. If it's a mm -hmm. propeller of a ship, they make it out of wood first. Mm -hmm. Joint it together, and when you see the finish, you, you think that the ship is going to use that thing. Unbelievable. You go in there, it's like a museum. Mm -hmm. All different parts made for the, for, 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 to be the to be foundered. Mm -hmm. And foundry is another bit. I never stopped talking. Let me show you. <laughs> yes, yeah, we I definitely guess. have a lot of material for other talks in the future. Yeah. Yeah, just Nani, may I just interject? Um, because I, the anthropology or the oral histories project, they have a time limit, so we're a little so over the time limit. But but um, I, Nanu, is Leo still there? Can Leo help you to join my my Zoom party? Because I would like to continue this on my Zoom, so we can go until you feel like ending. But Leo is sitting next to Nana. But I could I could okay. call him. No, okay. No, could, okay. So, uh, Don, Don meantime, let's um, let's just wrap it up officially. And um, have, have you you've po can can you just post the link again in the chat? I am. And Nanu, you, Nanu, I'm so going to put this also. I'm also going to put this on Messenger for you, so you can join us again on a different Zoom that I'm going to host. Okay. All right. So Thank you. thanks so much. Um, we'll have to end this here. Thanks a lot to everybody for participating. Thanks for your questions. And thanks again, uh, John, for your wonderful and precious stories. It's my, it's good. my, it's my, my good. pleasure. Thank you. Good. Uh, just just a minute. Uh, I think Adrian. Grima. Yes. Uh, le no, no. Let me just uh, thank, thank also, John also and Dawn okay. and yourself, Michael, for for taking us through uh, this with, with John. It was a wonderful uh, moment. Uh, let me just add. Uh, at the very end, that Naritlieta and Tahdita Ohra tal tal tradizioni orali duari nomenclatura ecclesiastica e amed Tahdita fissita Naritlieta hadash tameyu fu zumo kol Vincent Galia. Un ringrazia le club kot ba Maltin o le fond ta ricerca ta l'università ta nainu na tachom. Thank you so much, John, for for giving us so much of your time. Even in preparation for this for this for this moment, uh, thanks to Michael, of course, and to Dawn. Um, enjoy and, your. And, can I say something, part. please? And, yes. And may I add also, thank you so much, um, Professor Grima and, and Michael. From the bottom of my heart, you know, my Nanu stories are, are there's so much. There's so much he didn't talk about, and I really hope he'll talk Absolutely. about it now. <laughs> okay. And, and I, I really, I'm just so grateful. So thank you, thank you both. Thank and you. So and thanks, so thanks am I. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm honored. I'm, I'm exuberant. Thank you. <laughs> God bless. You.
one thing, one thing before I leave. Take care of the Maltese language. Don't let it be Italianized. <laughs> Don't let it be involved with any other. That's a gift from God. We, the little, little mm -hmm. dry drop, we have a language of our own. That's so, that's so. But that's on that. Mm -hmm. God tough. bless you all. I think God bless you. Okay, and Indeed now we're going to have the party. Yeah. And then you come to the party because everyone wants to ask you questions. Okay, so yeah. okay. Let, let, me, let, me, let me call Leo, okay? Okay. All right. And everybody else? So we're, ending, we're ending this here. Um, 